my name is Daniel Reti. I am a researcher um, at DFKI. And in this project, um, I was the leader of use case two. Um, yeah. So this use case was about um, the secure and intelligent orchestration of large I IoT networks. Um, therefore, this use case was uh, mainly focused on um, yeah, security solutions. And in this demo session, I will present um, three security AIFs that have been developed within this use case. The first security AIF that I'm going to present is um, the intrusion detection based on NetFPGAs. NetFPGAs are programmable network switches, and um, we can use them um, yeah, to inspect packets as they pass by, in this case using the split and merge algorithm. Um, I will start the video. On the left side, you can see um, pre-recorded simulated network traffic, which includes anomalies. And on the right side, you can see um, the net FPGA traces and um, different metrics that are calculated. Uh, these metrics are source and destination IP addresses, uh, source port cardinality, packet count, SIN count, and packet size. Then the following step, which we, you will see in a second, um, these metrics are used to calculate an anomaly score. And the anomaly score is calculated um, for each TCP port separately. <coughs> okay, here we have the calculation of the anomaly score for each of the subnets. And then a total anomaly score of 21 is calculated um, based on the anomalies that were found in each subnet. Um, yeah, to summarize the results, um, the data set used was the MAWI Archive 2006 data set, 2016 data set. Um, and uh, with the method I just showed, um, the different um, yeah, anomalies were calculated using the split merge algorithm, and then we set the threshold to everything with an anomaly score greater than 15 uh, should be considered an anomaly, and then we manually investigated these anomalies and found out that the um, false positive rate is 30%. Okay. The next security AIF uh, that I want to show is the auto configuration of hyperparameters. The idea is that we take a pre-trained model and can deploy it in a new environment and quickly adapt the hyperparameters to, um, yeah, to improve the performance of the intrusion detection um, yeah, based on the specificities of the environment. Um, yeah, here's the video for it. Um, the first step is the yeah, pre-processing pre of the data. So we have uh, two data set, the IDS 2017 and IDS 2018 data set. And the data is um, yeah, encoded. Then we use the, Optun yeah, the Optuner um, framework to apply Bayesian optimization to the hyperparameters and retrieve the optimal configuration for each data set. Um, then we use our own meta learning uh, to calculate meta features for each data set and associate this with the optimal configuration to create the meta data set. So we calculate meta features. This is what you just can see on the screen. Um, and the fourth step is the inference. Here we infer the hyperparameter for each data set using random forest regression um, and compare it to the Optuner um, yeah, meta uh, 
features and compare the meta features with the meta learning. Um, the result is uh, presented here. We can uh, we could show that um, yeah we could limit the metadata set size and uh, therefore limit the computational resources um, to have similar results. Um, and the third uh, security AF that I want to show is the federated learning based anomaly detection. Um, anomalies in this case could be attacks, but also malfunction, malfunction functioning or failure of the hardware. Um, yeah, for this, we monitor different uh, components of the Connect Compute platform, uh, for example, CPU, memory, disk, and network states. Um, on a virtual layer and also on a physical layer. Um, okay, I will show the video for this. And the first step um, is the training step. Here we can um, set a number of clients, a number of nodes, and then uh, the training would start and start containers um, to train on the amount of clients and train yeah, on different properties of the system. These properties are the ones that are just um, yeah, named memory, the network, and the disk. And um, it's performed on the physical resources and also on the virtual resources. Uh, now you can see um, the result models that are saved. So we have the containers and the physical data, and all the uh, models are, trained, are stored in a JSON file. Um, and now what you can see on the screen is um, the inference here. Our framework uh, takes the data and the models that have just been trained and um, evaluates them so, and generates uh, these graphs. So you have um, yeah, state diagrams that um, show in which state the system has been. It was a little fast. Um, which, uh, yeah, which uh, states the system has been, how often the states have been visited, and how long the system has been in each of these states. Um, it also generates these heat maps that compare um, the mean square error of the virtual and physical group for memory, for network, and for CPU. Okay. And um, as results for the anomaly detection uh, based on federated learning, um, this was evaluated using failure injection. Um, here on the right, you can see three graphs, one for the recall, one for the F1 score, and one for the precision. Um, the dots are the federated model, and the squares are the baseline, which is a centralized model. Um, and yeah, the y-axis is uh, zoomed in, it's cut off, so the values are uh, nearer, nearer than it seems. And we can see for the CPU, which is the blue line, um, it oscillates for the recall around the centralized model, the F1 score, um, yeah, the, I, it's very similar, and um, yeah, the precision is a little below, but only uh, less than 0.5% uh, difference. Um, to measure the link band bandwidth, uh, a bottleneck, a throttle was simulated um, by including <coughs> network traffic up to 15 times of the normal value. Um, here we could see a decrease of 20% compared to the centralized model. And um, to simulate um, yeah, also network failure, we did a packet loss injection and randomly dropped up to 80% of the packets. And here, um, yeah, we could see the values are close to the centralized model. Um, yeah, around 10% deviation in the worst case scenario. So yeah, we have definitely a trade-off between centralized and uh, federated learning, um, but we also have advantages that the learning is distributed and uh, the training time can be increased. 
Okay, lastly, I want to um, yeah, mention that uh, these AIFs that I presented um, yeah, have some requirements for the AI Edge platform, and these requirements um, are the, the usage of the lifecycle management and orchestration of AIFs, for example, for the federated learning where you have different nodes, um, and also the data aggregation and data pipeline is needed for the intrusion detection for the data collection. Um, we are using the hardware acceleration because, first of all, the AI models can be accelerated using hardware acceleration, but also we have a specific hardware use case with the native PGAs um, and overall the distributed computing um, to improve yeah, latency and also um, yeah, we enhance privacy using the federated learning approach. Okay, that's just from my side.